The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi, from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisund on Muindi. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there, how can I help you, mister? The look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. Kind of makes you feel like an arsehole for no apparent reason. I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. Oh yes, born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumors. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. The containers in the yard are green in Wild Pines livery, and the mountains rising behind Leo is all red in Union colors. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard's core. There appear to be cisterns underneath the Union container covers. Yes, they are hiding it from the inside. All the red containers have the Debarders Union logo on them. No, not really. Mr. Everett doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. Oh, I don't know, mister. They say it's some chemicals. Most of them have labels on them, I think. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation. For a week or so. Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. Him and his boys stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling him to take some time off. Don't go all bad cop on this simple, friendly fellow. I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. Well, that's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hardies. Look at him. It's not gonna be anything useful anyway. Don't fight it. Better to go with the flow. Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving and the words are spewing forth. Words, words, and look, even more words. This guy could go on till the end of days. Now he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who... No, he already switched to a prized fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there with your questions. Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. I'm like Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town, and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is away. <laughs> I 
Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Who is this Miss Beaufort? A real pretty lady with a skin like those Douai Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down beside the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. Stay on this Miss Beaufort topic. Oh, Lizzie, she is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. He respects that word. That's obvious. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. For a fraction of a second, there's sadness in his eyes. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Dr. Lemaitre said so, and she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. So Everard trained a lawyer named Miss Beefoot. Interesting. Yes. This place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. The white rectangle on your clothes might not mean an awful lot in Martinez, but the recognition from an authority figure made Leo's day. Oh, yes, yes. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. Oh, yes. I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. <laughs> it's very, very good. Makes a man feel so warm and happy. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renadan's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. Power borscht, huh? Never heard of a borscht that turns little guys into dogfighters. Alcohol, however. Yes, yes. I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling in rags. Oh, sure, mister. Sure. You do that, yes, sir. He didn't actually understand what you meant, and now he's just nodding along. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. Guys like Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made marginalized what it is today. Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Patience. Deep down you have the mental power to keep listening. Not many would, but you do. Had an arithmetics teacher, Miss Bellows. <laughs> Her real name was Miss Bellums. She was a real pretty lady. But when she got mad... <laughs> All the boys liked her, if you know what I mean, mister. We used to sneak in her yard in the dark and peek through the window. One time we saw Miss Bellows with a fellow. Yes, we did. Yes, we did, mister. Them was naked, too. That's all I got to say about that. Thank you. Eh, almost forgot. Mr. Everard is in that container over there. We got distracted telling the story, but he's in there. Bye-bye now.
before you is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. With a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. A typical power play. Wait for him to speak first. Show him you've got a backbone. The one good eye of this man feels you up without even flickering. The other, his lazy eye, is constantly moving like a goldfish in a tank. Grotesquely magnified by his plus six glasses. Amblyopia, a childhood condition. For a moment, you don't know where to look. It is unbearably humid in the trailer. Beads of sweat slide down the man's forehead. Yet, he's unperturbed, holding his own. His look goes from steely to inquisitive. A broad, self-satisfied grin crosses his wide face. You hear the wet smack of his lips. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately, my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair is incredibly uncomfortable. Fortunately, your ass is made of iron, and the chair is made of wood. Iron beats wood. You manage not to shift around too much. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Yes, but you owe him for it. Yes, I know, Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. Don't mention it. But also, don't forget it. I'm just kidding, of course. Is he? He's not. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. Oh, God. Why didn't you think of this before? Cops have guns. Where's yours? It's gone. Your gun is gone. There's nothing in your pockets. You don't need a gun. We can still have fun without the gun. 
The fun doesn't need to stop. Have some right now! Are you all right, Harry? You seem anxious. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this Mr. Dubois he keeps repeating? What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! While Everard is distracted by your odd behavior, the lieutenant's eyes are mapping everything around you. The folder, desk, papers on the wall. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow, in a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Don't be dramatic. I can see your condition is terminal. What an odd demonstration of... Uh, you got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you. Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everart, I call you Harry. My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is first. I assure you, there's nothing to be ashamed of, Harry. You're among friends, and the good news is... I have a big fat folder on you, Harry. I'm sure you have a lot of questions to ask. Maybe I can help you out. Don't trust him. For all you know, Dubois might be his name. You need to confirm this. I'm sure you had some concerns you thought I might be able to address. And you were probably right. I can. It's just a brown folder. You can't make out what's written on it. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Asking too many questions will make you look weak. You should maybe focus on the folder. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. This translates into, haha, you guys are so corrupt. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. As you look at the folder, Everard covers it with his hand and pets it. He's hiding it from you. 
because it's not a real RCM folder. It's just another one of those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi, from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? That means he doesn't really know anything about you. A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age... Yes, yes, Harry. You are obviously in peak physical condition, and I salute both your initiative and your physical prowess. Very impressive, Harry. Very impressive. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. I don't know what that means, Harry. Shady brew. There are so many moving parts in my operation, I can't keep track of them all. You know what? Don't even tell me. Whatever it is, do it. Surprise me. Just one thing. If you can, make it even shadier. He sincerely has no idea what you were talking about. And he doesn't care either. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now, I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely nothing shady about it. An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. You could win the trust of the arch liar, pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. Oh, no ones. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Fantastic, my friend! Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level.
You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Harry, Harry. I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. I assure you we are working on locating the missing sidearm as well. The lieutenant is concerned about the lost gun and feels that the fact you haven't prioritized looking for it is unfortunate, if inevitable, and doesn't put the RCM in a good light. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun-finding competition on our hands. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry.
buddy. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Your body does not betray your degeneracy. That's a lie. You're in great shape. Don't say anything. Size him up first. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? It must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm, I'm Sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. What is this androgynous display of sexual maturity? Things are not as bad as they look. Sure, you have high blood pressure from metabolizing heroic quantities of ethanol, but you are robustly built. You will survive. Jean, look, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him to leave. You have succumbed to Al-Hul. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Al-Hul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. It's not good. It's like a rat crawled into your stomach, got drunk and drowned. Yes, Alhul. He means alcohol. Correct, my small skull servant. Alhul is an ancient Ilmaran poison. A parasitic fungus that has colonized your race. It is a trick the desert pygmies played on you, for humiliating them and stripping them of their land. Intentionally fermented drinks have existed for 10,000 years. This is a fabrication the alchemists of Yizot and Bashir and the Holem and Hul have fed you people. No one believing in it, race loser. Why don't you have another drink? Your features are not yet congenitally deformed enough. Oh yeah, measure head. This is going well for measure head. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplog Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the ham sandwich race is waning. Show him the ham still got it. Willingly calling yourself a ham sandwich, how far the Occidental Apple Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? 
It is, baby, yeah. You know it. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Simenine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of al Hul. Your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skulls. You could internalize Measurehead's race theory. It would enrich you rhetorically. The best idea. Ask what kind of races there are first. Classification is core to this stuff. Do you? There are three categories of race. Tip A, the heroic races. Tip B, the servile races and the vile CF race cauldron of pederasty. Which one do you need an occasion on? I knew you would go straight for the vile cauldron. Everyone does. You need to first learn about Team A and B to appreciate the depravity of the chimeric races. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, it just won't make any sense. Yes, it would seem nonsensical. Those are the Simonese, the Areopagite, and the Occidentals, excluding the Mao, of course. The Mao are riddled with eczema to the point where they find it impossible to smile. They are all lactose intolerant. A common result of inbreeding. A receding genetic pool has led the Mound on reprehensible street parades. In Mound cities like Stads Canal and Vredefort, wearing wooden clogs on their feet and little green tassels on their hats. You know them by the names of their nation states. The Oranese, the Gotwaldians, and the Königsteiners. My people simply call them Mao. Mahun is a derogative term for first world people of Gotwaldian descent. They do not all have eczema. Also, people of Katla, like the Sudu and the Uhu, are much more lactose intolerant. In some municipalities of Oranje, People do wear shoes made of wood to street parades. Green, orange, and even yellow tassels have also been seen on hats. The mound are proof that you can have too much occidental racial purity and tassel-centric culture. Inbreathing has led to a lactose intolerant subrace whom no one can take seriously. Colorful tassels are Let's be honest, not a good tutorial choice for this century. You might want to avoid wooden clogs too. The Vespertines and Messinians of Vesper and Messina, the ancient Meteorans of Meteo by the Golden Pisantic Sea, the Suren of Sur La Clé, and even the North Königsteiners, all have Tip A race propensity. The other large Mondial civilization, the Mesk, are too yellow and oleaginous to count as a heroic race. True, they are violent and expansionist, but they have a glandular problem. Overproduction of sebum. 
Seabom is leaking into their brains, making them listen to El Mariachi music and eat toxic minced meat based food, which in turn only produces more Seabom. As proven by the Maun and the Mask, Occidental Tiba is in retrograde. The Semenese and the Aryopajit are on the ascent. The indigenous people of this, the Insolindian archipelago. The Simonese inhabit the southern islands. I am Simonese, from the stock of Ulubui on Ile de Fontaine. The Areopagites are the master race of the Ilmaran deserts. The Simonese are descendants of the Areopagites. We came here during a Heroic migration from Ilmara to Ansuland. Thousands of years before the lactose intolerant Maun Reden Occidentals discovered this place. Wait, didn't Ilmaran Desert Pygmies invent alcohol and get pillaged just a short while ago? No, those were scimitar wielding race losers of Sahrava, Izet, and Bashir, with their Himi servants. Big difference. The Areopagites were fasting and conquering while this happened. You never penetrated the Western dunes. Jean, baby, you're on fire. I know. Bay. The Areopagites are sleek, long-headed. The Simonese are powerful, mesomorphic. The former is an immutable progenitor, unchanged since the Super Isola of Pericarnassus. Ancient brains rest in their slender skulls. The latter is perfected and adapting until they form the Simeno Ariopagit, or Simeopagit Super Race. That is all. There are no more Tip A races in the world.